So first off, let me be a little bit more specific here with the title of this video and explain that when I talk about storing my Steam Deck games, obviously I'm not talking about physical Steam Deck games considering everything on the deck is either digital or streaming from something like Game Pass or maybe remote play from like a PlayStation if you just wanted to like, I don't know, play some more Ragnarok before bed or something like that. Although while I do technically have a physical Steam Deck collection if you count the now defunct IndieBox service as being a physical Steam game, what I'm talking about today are how I store and organize my games digitally on the Steam Deck. And even that sounds kind of silly if I'm being honest considering the Steam Deck is just a PC and theoretically there's no limit to the amount of data or the type of data that you could store on its SSD, the SD card slot, or any connected drives through something like a USB-C hub or something like that. Because the Steam Deck is way more flexible than something like an Xbox or a PlayStation in terms of the data you can have on it and what you can actually do with that data, sort of a gaming Swiss Army knife of sorts. So all that being said, what I wanted to do today was go over some different considerations for how you store your data, and also go over my own personal approach to storing the games on my Steam Deck between the internal storage and the SD card. And I gotta be honest, at first I almost completely disregarded this as a video idea for the channel, because really, how much organization do you have to do? I mean, after all, the Steam Deck is pretty self-sufficient in terms of its ability to download, install, and update games automatically, so what's the big deal? Well, for starters, how breezy your storage management is really depends on a variety of factors, not the least of which is how you actually use your Steam Deck. Because depending on how you use your Steam Deck and the games you actually play there, every game that you have stored there might not actually be managed directly within Steam's interface. For instance, one of the things that I found last year for the Steam Deck and made a video about was the Heroic Launcher. Now, the Heroic Launcher lets you load up and install games from your Epic library or your good old games library on the Steam Deck so you can play games from those marketplaces as well. However, while I've tried to stay on top of those free games that Epic gives out on a weekly basis, I hadn't really launched the Heroic Launcher except for a few times since I made that video. So whenever I went to manage some of the storage on my own device recently, I remembered this, went in there, and found that I still had a few games installed that were chewing up about 30 gigabytes worth of space. However, the games that I did install through the Heroic Launcher would not have shown up in the regular storage section that you would go to under your settings in the Steam Deck natively, so if you are using something like Heroic Launcher to load up games from your Epic library or good old games or wherever, you might end up leaving space on the table and just not know about about it. And while we're on the subject of non-native Steam games on the deck, there are also ROMs to consider if you're somebody who's really big into emulation. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm the most avid emulation fan that I know, but I do like to keep a range of personal favorites available in case nostalgia ever strikes me and I just want to jump into a quick game of F-Zero or revisit the original Silent Hill. Now, thankfully for games from like the fourth generation and back, these games do not take up much space at all. I'm talking about games like the NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, things like that. As a matter of fact, I looked it up and I think if you wanted to put the entire NES library on your Steam Deck, it would take up a crazy low amount of space, something in the range of like 300 megabytes or something. However, once you get to the fifth generation and beyond, where you talk about consoles that started storing everything on optical media, systems like the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, things like that, then they start to take up a lot more space and that can add up really quickly. So if you're somebody who likes to keep a bonkers amount of titles from those generations available on your deck at all times, it really does become a serious consideration in terms of where you're going to store those titles because they can start chewing up many gigabytes of space very quickly. So that's definitely something to consider if you're using a tool like EmuDeck to go ahead and get your Steam Deck set up for emulation, and something to think about when you start deciding where you're going to be storing all those files, whether it's on the internal SSD or on the SD card. And finally, let's go ahead and talk about native Steam games themselves. Whenever you're downloading and installing games directly from the Steam library, they're either going to live on the SSD or on your SD card. Now at this point I've used a few different types of micro SD cards for my Steam Deck, and I have to say that the relative decrease in speed that you might get from loading a game from the SD card versus the internal SSD has been completely negligible to my eye. Now granted, that's just my personal experience, so if you have any particular horror stories about a certain type of SD card that you've used with your deck just performing in a terrible way, please let me know in the comments below. I'm just saying that if I had fired up 10 random games on my Steam Deck without any regard to the location where those games are stored, I couldn't tell you just based on that load speed alone or performance whether or not it was installed locally or if it was on the external SD card. But just because I don't functionally care where a game is installed, whether that's in internal storage or on the SD card, practically speaking there are a couple of key reasons that I do like to keep an eye on where I put my games. And the first is for the storage space itself. Basically, if I want to install a new game on the Steam Deck when I'm running low on space, I want to make sure that I don't haphazardly delete something that I really want to keep on the Steam Deck because it's a game that I don't want to have to re-download. Because there have been more than a few instances in the past year when I was trying to make a video for this channel and I installed a range of new games, and in a rush to make sure that I had the space to do that, I ended up deleting a game that I really wanted to stick around, but because I didn't look very carefully or mentally just couldn't do the gymnastics of remembering where I'd put a particular game, that I ended up deleting some stuff that I really wish that I hadn't. 
I mean, granted, to put them back is only a download away, but depending on your internet speed and how annoying it is for you to constantly restore games that you're really, really into at the time, it is something to take into consideration. And the other reason I like to stay on top of where my games are installed on the Steam Deck is just because I like things to be really organized. And even though the Steam Deck has some really nice ways that you can tell just sort of at a glance what your full library is versus what's installed versus your favorites versus collections that you've created, Sometimes if you're in a rush to find a particular game and you're just scrolling through the installed section, it can still be kind of a pain to find what you're looking for, especially if you have a lot of storage space and in turn a lot of different games that are installed. So having now gone through some considerations for where you store your games on the Steam Deck and how visible they are within the Steam Deck interface, let's go ahead and take a look at my personal approach to how I organize all of my games across the storage locations that are available to me. And let's start with the internal SSD. So because the SSD isn't removable, or rather I guess I should say not easily removable, I guess you could swap it if you wanted to, but this is where I decided to keep all of my favorite games. My rationale being that these are games that I never want to have to really shift around that I always want to be available to me. And then beyond favorites, I also keep any multiplayer games here that might not be my favorite games ever, but if it is a game that I've played multiplayer with friends before and I think there's a small chance that they might want to jump in again, then I'll go ahead and leave it installed here as well. So again, I don't accidentally delete it, then somebody wants to get into a multiplayer session and then, you know, I have to scramble to re-download it once more. Also, I should point out that I use the internal SSD for my non-Steam library games as well, so anything from Epic or good old games also goes here. My rationale being that if I ever was in a situation where I wanted to jump back into those marketplaces and fire up a game that I got for free from there, then I'm not going to have to go scrambling looking for an SD card to make sure that I can actually fire those games up. Now on the emulation front, I keep all of my ROMs also on the SSD, because sort of like my native Steam games and my non-native Steam games, I don't keep every ROM that I have on the system at all times. Rather, I tend to just keep a collection of 10 to 20 personal favorites that I know I'm going to enjoy revisiting whenever, and the rest of the ROMs that I have I keep on an external drive so that I can bring them in as needed. That would be for situations where it's like I need to capture footage for a particular game, or if I was doing research for, you know, some particular project that I was working on, then I will pull those games in, but I don't just keep like, you know, like a thousand ROMs directly on my deck or anything. Now when it comes to the SD card on my Steam Deck, I actually use a one terabyte card for this, and this is where I install any new or games that I'm really not sure about yet, which makes sense because I do a ton of list style videos on this channel and I'm constantly putting like new games onto my Steam Deck. So any new games like this or ones that I'm just not that familiar with, start on the SD card first, and then after they've been deemed worthy, I guess you would say, then they sort of get promoted to the internal SSD. If it turns out to be a game that I'm really, really enjoying and I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely want to spend more time with this, then I'll go ahead and put those games on the internal internal storage. And by organizing my games this way, I pretty much know at any given moment if I absolutely have to free up some space somewhere, that it's going to be the SD card that I'm going to want to delete a game from rather than jumping to the internal storage since that will, again, be chock full of games that I really, really want to stick with playing that I'm either in the middle of playing or it's a game that, you know, I just revisit often because it's a personal favorite. Now, to be fair, I suppose I could start using multiple SD cards and at some point in the future, I very well may start doing that. But at the moment, I'd like to avoid that as long as possible just because I don't relish the idea of juggling multiple SD cards and trying to remember what I have installed where, and that just doesn't sound very appealing to me. I know there are some people that do it, I just don't think it's for me right now. Now storage aside, let's talk about how I actually organize my games in the interface. When it comes to ROMs, they are kind of helpfully, you know, sort of subdivided into collections by default when you go through Deck setup steps. So, you know, you've got all of your Dreamcast games, all of your Super Nintendo games, you know, Game Boy games, all that stuff gets sort of sorted into its own collection. And while that is really handy if you're trying to figure out what to play just based on system alone, I've grown to not really like it that much. So at a certain point, I'm probably going to blow these away entirely and work on getting all of my ROMs into like a unified front end of some sort, whether that's like RetroArch or, you know, some other emulation front end that kind of groups everything together for you because I don't know if I still like having all of my ROM just kind of like just splayed all the way across the Steam Deck interface. And my new strategy for the collections area of the interface moving forward after I've cleared out all of the emulation stuff is I will probably use this just for ad hoc collections. That would be times whenever I'm making a video that is focused on, you know, a particular genre or something like that, and I've got a lot of games that kind of fit logically into that bucket, then I will make a collection for it temporarily, and again, with the way I've got it structured now, if a game becomes so good that it becomes a personal favorite, then it'll go into the favorite section and be installed on the internal SSD. If it's not, and it's not going to stick around in an effort to make sure I've got space freed for future videos, then I'll just go ahead and delete it out of there and probably clear out the collection entirely. And then when it comes to native Steam games, I've just been using that favorite section for its exact intended purpose and making sure that every game that's on the internal SSD that truly represents a favorite is actually also placed into the favorites collection. So I know anytime I navigate there, every game that's in that list is going to be installed and ready to go and that it's a game that, you know, I'm not going to delete anytime soon. 
All right, and that's about it for this video. Honestly, I'm a little worried now that I took a very fun system and just made a really dry video about it. But honestly, I just sat down the other day and I was looking at all of the different games that I have installed on my Steam Deck across, you know, just the storage locations themselves and then like the logical locations that kind of get displayed to me as the user of the device. And I just wanted to put some order to the chaos. So what about you? Do you have any, you know, special systems in place or processes or approaches that you have to how you store your games on the Steam Deck? If so, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. As always, thank you for taking the time to hang out here on the channel with me. I really appreciate that. Have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one.